particularly the conversation about VR is a great segue to the next presentation. We recognize one of the great opportunities we have as technology retailers would be, for example, to put someone inside a game. You can use VR to put someone inside the action. Uh, you go upstairs in the exhibition area, you see a, a number of demos, you see a very large dedicated space uh, for gaming. That's been a big emphasis at the district event this year. And we've brought someone who is a recognized expert in the space, uh, partly because of incredibly broad experience. Uh, he's worked in content, he's worked in software, he's worked in hardware. Uh, he's been with Warner Brothers, he's been with Microsoft, he's been with Electronic Arts. Uh, so this is sort of an unrivaled perspective across the business focus expressly on gaming. And I want to welcome to the stage Stefan Lampinen to talk about believing the hype in gaming. Stefan. Welcome to you. Presentation is ready. And there you go. And where it's going, but also some uh, background what's happened the last even decades. And I think it was um, well-timed yesterday to have GFK on the stage where they also talked about the games number and, and VR. So thank you for that, Ryan and Stuart. So um, basically, maybe I should point there, right. So um, as Ryan said, I've been in the games business all my life, started with, um, with board games and then moved into the first Sega Mega Drive and, and all of that. And at that time, long time ago, it took like five years until a new console arrived because there was so much development. And uh, today, I actually decided 2009, I was thinking, what is not happening in the games industry? Well, there isn't a company who actually can give specific advice, discreet advice. How do you enter Turkey? How do you enter Russia? How do I get to meet that person that he never answered my email? Or is there a fast track to meet this top executive? So today, Game Advisor, we provide discrete advisory. Most of the clients today prefer to keep it confidential. Um, but some example going back 2010-11 is uh, Bethesda, Square Enix, Minecraft. I was in the advisory board on Minecraft 2010-11. Uh, today, we also work with um, one big a city, actually, how to, they should put up a vision about AR and VR, I look into universities, and so on. And we're based in, in Stockholm and, and London. So the industry today, as, as you, most of you already know, it's an incredibly violent industry, attract key talents from all over the world. It's of much bigger, of course, than music and film, and it's been that for a, for a long time. And it's an important and growing sector. You, you see that also from um, countries, actually, who's looking into ecosystem. Finland had some rough times when you have the, the export business going down, you had Nokia going down, there was some cut in the military service, etc. So the, the government decided to do some program, inspiring program for development, and how do you uh, loan money to start games business. And you have Canada doing the same, you have Sweden doing the same, and so on. So with that, it brings even more excitement, media bus, and with media bus, you of course get investors. If you look into Sweden today, Sweden alone, uh, I think it's 1.3 billion in, in revenue, it's much bigger than electricity, and it's the same level like export, like uh, Volvo, Scania, Loris. And Minecraft was sold for 25% more than Volvo was sold to China. So it's always new platforms, new technologies coming in. And this time, with the new technology, you also see cross-border cross or co collaboration between traditional business to business and the, the games business, which I find incredibly interesting. So what, what is the games sector, as I call it today, to, to simplify it a bit? Of course, you have the oldest and the finest consoles on the right corner there, which has been since 90s. And it's still a very sizable business. The digital was coming into that. And you have digital downloads, of course, on top of the physical business, which is the console and the game. And then on your right side, you have PC, 
where you have some very strong countries on PC, Germany, Russia, Poland, Turkey, but PC is also growing. How come everything is growing? Yeah, because you have more people joining, you have more countries joining, because years back, which I'm coming back, I think it's on the next slide, there were, there were very limited countries that could participate for various reasons of the technology or, or wall garden. And then in the middle you have the mobile business, which obviously is the biggest revenue size when you, when you include APEC region, which is the iOS and Androids. And obviously there you don't sell so much accessories. So games industry is console, PC, and mobile. Pretty easy. If you look back, because I'm thinking, well, I've never been to the game industry. Can we enter as a company? Yes, you can. There is always a good timing. Because when I started in the, in the early 90s, there were a Japanese company, then it was Sega, another Japanese company, then Sony started in 95, three Japanese companies, and then 2000, Microsoft entered with Xbox. So at that time, there were hardly any developers in, in countries like Sweden or Germany, to give you a few examples. Because first you launch a game and a console in Japan, you waited six months, then you go to US, and then you waited six months, and then you go to Europe. And every five years there was a new console coming, and then suddenly something interesting happened. That genius, I, I call the Machiavelli of technology, Steve Jobs, he, he figured out with the iPhone that was launched 2007, that let's do an infrastructure, an ecosystem, where we can launch our content globally. And that was a huge opportunity for developers. And uh, that started to take place more like 2010, 11, 2013, I said, then the market become truly global. It was Supercell, they had a revenue of $1 million per day when, when it's starting to explode. I mean, Minecraft was just ridiculous in the end how much money they sold. Because if you're coming into the top dressing window of iOS or Google with one of your games, gosh, you're not becoming a millionaire, you become almost a billionaire, it's scary. And then looking forward, of course, PC is also developing. We have Val, which is the Steam digital platform. So it's very easy for a local developer, if you're in Croatia or Bulgaria, wherever you are in the world, and you think you have something interesting, you can actually go for a global reach pretty fast. Coming back to the iPhone, just, just to give you some perspective, I was visiting Supercell. Most of the mobile games companies in northern region has some links to, to Nokia, believe it or not. Uh, so, so Supercell, seven people in a small office in Helsinki, April 2011, was ending up having a revenue of $12 million per employee. $12 million per employee. EEA have $600,000 per employee. And that is even more than Apple had um, six months ago, which is, was then the number one tech company. So, and therefore I think when you look into who are the average gamer, I think that's less interesting because of course with smartphone you have a lot of females and you have a different demographic compared to the, to the PC games. So if you look into the global games revenue, there is many research companies out there and uh, one of them, obviously not GFK, has inflated a bit of the numbers, I think, on VR. And I, my company gets often asked, what's the real story behind things? And, and there's a lot of companies saying 90 billion, 96 billion, so I just put in 93. But you can see that the APEC region with South Asia and China, that's a lion's share of mobile phone, of course, smartphones. And then US and EMEA, because EMEA for me, Middle East, Africa, Russia, etc. It's a lot of PC, traditional consoles, and tons of accessories. The, the opportunities are huge in this market. And I put in Latham there in the corner because they're also moving in um, lately with Brazil and some other companies. But I think the global revenue is that interesting. It's just saying it's a big market and it's not going to walk away for sure. So if we say, what's next? What, what's happening here? Can it just continue to grow? Um, and um, yes, I just took a few sound bites here. PC gaming, $31 billion. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, I think EFK was saying 1.5 billion for uh, PC accessories alone. Mobile, of course, continued to grow. 
Uh, Esport is coming from a low base, and that's going to grow at least 25% year on year. Today, roughly, esport is 500 million. I think when you talk about esport and VR, I would take a pinch of salt of the research companies and the stats because um, it's hard also with the digital business. How do you get the real story, what is selling? And of course, virtual reality is established by then as with a solid install base, bringing a market up to a sizable number of 100 billion which is good for you to know if you're going to expand geographically, of course. So eSport, I used to say sometimes, I see it as a parallel path of the traditional gaming because it's almost like a Formula One circus. You have the stars, you have tournaments, they're traveling around, they make tons of money, a bit like EFK was touching yesterday. But also here, opportunities. Gaming chairs, headsets, keyboards. When you look into keyboards now compared to keyboards I used to sell with Microsoft or Mises, is this growing? Yes, for sure. Virtual reality. There are some concerns I have with virtual reality because I'm grandpa of games. You've seen that many companies trying to enter the game industry. You had Philips Media in the early 90s. You have Nokia in 2003. You have Disney. And some have been less successful or taking longer time. With virtual reality today, you have hardware companies pushing like crazy. And that means that the content providers are thinking, wait, hang on a minute. Are we going to invest? And it's hard for content companies if they know they have 200 people working on a project going to bring them $90 million. Do they want to divert 25 people into virtual reality? So there, there are some improvements to be done when it comes to consumer perception and industry perception. But with the investment, it's amazing what you can do. I mean, I'm, I was stunned when I can see the latest when I was trying. I had the luxury, the pleasure to meet um, HTC's um, CEO, Ms. Sher Wang, in, in Vegas. When you go into a human body and you go into I mean, look in the traditional industry, mining. Sometimes you can't go into a mine because of security measures. Hospitals, medical, I'm coming back to that in a minute. Accessories on virtual reality. So um, I'm going to show a video so you can see more of the potential. So let's play the video. So this is a center in LA that is existing today. 
And you can see, uh, I was up in the north of Sweden, I was saying, wow, we can pre pre pretend that we are in Alaska or in Lapland because you can just put yourself on a chair with a bit of snow outside, have a hair blower, and then you're on a snowmobile. So um, it's huge opportunities what we are bringing into the market. And of course, you are closed because you're excluding yourself from the world. And EFK was mentioned gameplay of four hours, which obviously not gonna happen with VR. It's like two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour. Because when you're excluded from the world, things can happen. They can nick your wallet, they can take your money, uh, and, and they can take your wife, just kidding. But I mean, a lot of things can happen if you don't see what's happening around you. Uh, so uh, therefore, that's the content and the explore is gonna be adjusted to that one, but of course, next step is that you're gonna see your hand and you're gonna have some visibility what's happening around you. Augmented reality, which is the next of the virtual reality, is basically you present in today's world, but you get the latest stats from Monaco football team or Barcelona, whoever, or you can see, oh, that's the guy I met. Mm, yeah, he bought that jacket that I was thinking, well, that's how much did he pay for that jacket? I mean, there's everything you can do with augmented reality, which is gonna take time, of course, because from nowhere was Pokemon coming, which was a very simple technology. It's Google Map and military technology, and you have a cartoon on a Google Map, and that's an easy way of augmented reality because you have the character just in front of you with mixed reality, you, you have it behind. So if you look at the five years outlook, you can see that Samsung and Google have done some good work with mobile VR. I was impressed in Vegas when I was meeting top guys with Google and they showed me the latest Harry Potter movie on VR. HTC Vive, what they're doing now, it's amazing. And the pace HTC Vive are doing, Oculus Rift. I mean, looking into the money that invested here, we have Facebook, HTC, Google, Samsung, and we have Apple now saying, yes, we're going into AR. That's an enormous amount of money. And, and you see after HTC, which is coming with mobile, and you're gonna see the hands, it's gonna be wireless. Uh, you have Microsoft HoloLens, you have Magic Leap, which is basically heavy process power here. Uh, and I talk a lot with Ericsson about what, what you can do with those handsets. So I think um, virtual reality is gonna be more mass market around two years time. Now it's more return of learnings, I used to say, to investors. When you go in to invest in a company, they're gonna learn a lot. And that's not only games companies, it's also traditional companies. And then coming into 2000, 2001, you have mixed reality. Look at the quality there. You can have some clowns playing. I mean, you can basically do everything. Part of that I think is scary, uh, and part of that I think is interesting. But, but you, can't, you can't stop that train that's coming. And the traditional games is not gonna move away, because even the board games have been coming back. People wanna see each other and play. So it's just that it's growing as a sector overall. Because I was four years with, with um, Warner Brothers, and I have two teenagers, daughters, myself, and, and I'm a football coach for, for young people. And uh, they don't watch movies at the same time they did last, uh, same pattern they did before, because they think movies is a bit long, two hours. Because today they want episodic content, they want shorter snapshots. It's a different pace that, that you're living on. The, the demand in school and universities is higher, they want to do more things. So therefore this kind of entertainment is just another level of entertainment. But clearly, clearly we're gonna see growth. And you can imagine everything with accessories into this. And that's your opportunity here, because I think Distri is a fantastic event for networking. And we're looking into what's the opportunity for a distributor and retailers. Well, I have a workshop this afternoon. You can come and ask me. But uh, Minecraft, I mean, even if they passed 20 million digital downloads, they're selling enormous amount of physical games. Controllers, headsets, joypad, gaming chairs, cables, racing wheels, keyboards, everything. And you can even have your own digital front gate today if you're in a not super competitive market. If you're in UK, Germany, France, mm, tougher. But if you're in a smaller country or different country where you have either political issues or if you have uh, tax issues which some have with video games, you can do your own digital front 
where, where um, you can have this blend between online and off, offline, which I know next speaker is going to talk about. And I find that tremendously interesting. So ARPU, average revenue per user. If you look at games PC console, for almost $200 per average user. I mean, that's a lot. And, and when looking to the relatively low install base of virtual reality, it's still $119. And so I used to say that if you're sitting in a country of 10 million people, 20 million people, how much market share do you want to have? You can look at the install base and what strategy do you use? And do you want to go for your graphical expansion? It's relatively easy because with Microsoft, I was heading up accessories and Xbox 360, and we were growing like crazy, even in markets like Romania, Croatia, uh, Turkey, of course, big country, but everywhere, depending if you have a good plan. And um, when you've been 27 years in the industry, you get a lot of friends. So a high percentage of my business is networking. So before I coming here, I thought, OK, who should I ask? What do they think about this event? And what do they think about um, accessories? And you see on the top there, 60% easily is retail. Esport, way bigger, faster than many people think. Sales director, traditional retail, yes, it's tough, but they're trying to do new things. Things are happening. You heard, you heard Ryan saying about Media Mark here. Uh, I think we're going to hear about Walmart later. Last down here, top brand company. I like what he said here. Retail share has no digitalization is taking away, and we see double-digit growth over the last years. So I, I also ask Batman. I, there's a nice bat cave in there, by the way. So what you should look out for, basically what I just said. And again, look at the huge potential. This is just, you can see the, the consumer business, the video games compared to other health, military, whatever. And this is an uh, estimate, I think it's from 2025, from Goldman Sachs. Really, really put a lot of money to make a perfect research. So you, need, you don't need to be an Einstein to figure out something is happening. So possible new models. Ryan mentioned Amazon Go. What's happening there? Is, are they, can you collaborate with Amazon? or should you try to beat them or collaborate? Retail is also pushing back on some initiatives. I was VP Sales Electronic Arts, and I was also heading up Xbox. And, and before you're launching a console platform, you need to have a dialogue with the retailer, because there is so much power in the games, so you can't push everything digital. You need the retail, of course. You have some countries which still are a bit reluctant to, to credit cards. You're going to play the game, you get more content. You're going to have episodic content. You're going to have new partnership, consolidation, play for free advertising, like Spotify model you're going to see on when you go with VR, AR. Try this game, just listen to two adverts, and you can play forever. So there's so many new things happening all the time. I, I, I find it amazing, and that's the reason I'm staying in this business. So that was basically what I wanted to say today. So um, in the afternoon, we also have a workshop where we can dive a little bit deeper, because I know most of the countries pretty well what's happening there. So thank you very much, guys. Stefan, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing that with us. And the thank conversation you. will continue this afternoon at the workshop for anyone who would like to dive deeper.